Hello everybody. Today I am delivering you the lecture 2 of the module 11. In the last lecture I discussed about the uh, support excitation in continuous system and support excitation are very common in many of the structures. For example, a aircraft wing which is attached to the fuselage and when the aircraft lands then fuselage is excited due to impact of the aircraft with the runway and as a result the vibratory motion is transferred on the wing. So that we have discussed and also we solved one example of continuous system. Today I will discuss some of the type of excitations that uh, causes significant response in this continuous system or structures and that are of concern for the design. And that type of excitation is known as transient excitation, X for a short duration time, but its effect is significant and must be taken into design. So I will consider such type of excitation to develop the expression for the response quantity and then I will discuss about a design methodology by means of response spectrum or shock spectrum. So today my topic will be first I will introduce a basic oscillator and its response to tangent forces and then I will discuss how to construct the shock spectrum or it is commonly known as response spectrum. Then I will use this concept of response spectrum to solve a problem in continuous system with some numerical data. So I will take up uh, three cases of tangent excitations that is one is step input with finite rise time, another is step rectangular pulse and uh, then another is half sine pulse. So for example uh, the first one which is step input with finite rise. So it will rise first and then it will remain constant. So that type of excitation may be there and it may seizes also at this duration. So the rise time is say Tr and uh, this is your force Ft and this is the time. So this type of uh, excitation is known as step input with finite rise time and only this portion that is known as ramp input ramp input and it is taken generally a linear function of time then it remains constant. So this is the first one that is step input with finite rise finite rise time then second one is rectangular pulse. So a pulse acts for a short duration and time of duration is important. So that is rectangular pulse. And third one is half sine pulse. So Td is the time of duration for the pulses here and here Tr is the rise time which are the important parameters Tr and Td. So that is half sine pulse. So I will discuss how the uh, response of the single degree freedom system that is the basic oscillator can be found with the help of this general expression in the time domain. Uh, that is called Duhamel's integral. So we know that Duhamel's integral is very useful method for calculating the force response of a system by this integral 
where HT is the impulse response function and FT is the forcing function. So we make use of this Duhamel's integral to find out the response of the basic oscillator and then we will extend this idea to the continuous system because ultimately you have seen that continuous system with the help of model superposition technique can be reduced to independent number of equations which are similar to the single degree freedom system. Okay. So first let us see the ramp input that is the forcing function is a is linearly varying. Here you can see the ramp input that is shown here it is rising uh, up to TR the time TR and the magnitude at this position when the it stops there is the maximum value of the force is P0 and the variation is given as P0 by TR into T at any time instant when T is greater than 0 and less than TR. Okay. So such type of excitation is known as ramp input. Why I am uh, taking this ramp input first because we have seen when we consider the excitation as step input with finite rise then we will have this part as well as constant force part. So therefore we have to derive the expression first for the ramp input and then we can utilize this along with the step input that we have already knew in, a, in our earlier discussions. So response of a system to shock input say this is the shock for a duration time tier is generally determined by Duhamel's integral. So xt is the displacement of the system. Here we are considering a single degree freedom system for example uh, this is a single degree oscillator. single degree freedom oscillator so mass is m and k is the stiffness and we are neglecting damping. We are neglecting damping because generally damping is small so its effect is not felt very much except for the resonance. So neglecting damping we have equation of motion m x dot if x is the displacement along this direction which is the positive direction of the displacement plus kx equal to ft where ft is the force acting here. Now ft here is your ram function that is shown as this graph. Okay. So now we are interested to find the response xt as a function of time with the help of Duhamel's integral when the system starts from rest and we are interested only in the fourth vibration part here. So this Duhamel integral can also be written in this form xt is equal to f tau ht minus tau d tau. So tau is a dummy variable here uh, taken and limit of integral is 0 to t. So when I integrate with respect to tau and put the limit 0 and t then the expression becomes a function of time t. Now for a undamped system the impulse response function is given by the this expression and it is nothing but the response of a single degree system to unit impulse subject to the initial condition say displacement 0 and velocity is 1 by m. So under these conditions one can find that uh, the HT that is impulse response function which is the displacement of a single degree freedom system subjected to unit impulse is nothing but 1 by m omega n sin omega n t where omega n is the natural frequency of the single degree freedom system and it is given by root over k by m. Now if I include the damping suppose if I want to uh, improve my expression including damping then I will have this expression for impulse response function ht equal to e to the power minus j omega n t divided by m omega d sin omega d t. So 
note here that omega n is the natural frequency that is given by this expression okay whereas omega d is the damped natural frequency so damped natural frequency and uh, this damping ratio are related so if omega d is the damped natural frequency then we can write omega d equal to omega n root over 1 minus j square so generally the damping is uh, small and in that case this omega d becomes approximately equal to omega n however let us write it here as a function uh, of uh, this damping ratio so this becomes a another variable not omega n okay but here decaying term you note it it contains natural frequency of the undamped system omega n okay so let us find the expression so write the duhamel integral x t equal to 0 to t f tau h t minus tau d tau now from this expression we can see that f t is equal to p naught by t r t r is the rising time or rise time into t so therefore we have this uh, constant term p naught uh, divided by t r and here also in the denominator you are seeing that m omega n that is due to the use of uh, impulse response function expression for the undamped system and inside the integral we have this variable tau into sin omega n t minus tau d tau and note that the limit of integral is 0 to t so after performing the integration because here you are uh, encountering the product of two functions so if you carry out the integration by parts of the function which are the product of two terms uh, then we get this x t is equal to p naught divided by uh, t r m omega n these are the constant term then the, the result of integration becomes tau into 1 by omega n cos omega n into t minus tau so cos of omega n t minus tau minus 1 by omega n square sin omega n t minus tau and then we put the limit 0 to t so you can see first we have taken this tau into integration of the second function first function into integration of the second function okay then we have minus the derivative of the first function and integration of the second function and then the whole uh, expression is again integrated so as a result we get this expression which is inside the bracket that you are seeing here okay so now put the limit so if i put the limit 0 to t 0 is the lower limit and t is the upper limit we get x t equal to p naught divided by m omega n square into t by t r minus sin omega n t minus tau divided by omega n t r now you can see here that uh, t is here which is a, a linear function of time and here you are getting a oscillatory term of uh, containing the sine functions and then after rearranging and we know that the maximum static deflection of the single degree freedom system xto is equal to p naught by k so this is the maximum static deflection so if i normalize this xt with p naught by k and you can see this quantity is nothing but your k this quantity is nothing but k so m omega n square is k so we now get xt by x st subscript 0 that is the maximum response maximum value of the displacement or in static condition is equal to t by tr minus sin omega n t divided by omega n tr 
So, this is the expression non dimensional displacement. Now, here we will get several interpretations from these results. Now, let us see. You can see if I express the expression for the displacement which contains the natural frequency omega n in terms of uh, this uh, time period uh, of the system T n natural time period. As you know that omega n can be substituted by 2 pi by T n. So, therefore, what T n is the fundamental time period. fundamental time period in second in single degree freedom system that is only one frequency there so it is a time period ok. So, now we write this in this fashion x t by x s t maximum that is the static displacement it, and it is a non dimensional quantity equal to t by t r minus sin 2 pi by t n into t divided by 2 pi by T n into T ok. See a plot how the displacement varies. So, this is the static displacement that is uh, x t you can uh, x s t static x s t static can be easily obtained say function of f t divided by k ok. So, this is also linearly varying because of uh, this function is a linear function. So, this is the static displacement, but the dynamic displacement we get this curve dynamic displacement. So, you can see that dynamic displacement is oscillating about the static displacement and the, uh, the frequency of oscillation here because there is no uh, forcing function has no frequency because it is a linearly varying force. So, therefore, the response now is oscillating at the natural frequency of the system. So, that time period that you are getting here is nothing but the natural time period or fundamental time period of the single degree freedom system. So, time period that you are getting that peak to peak here if you measure the time period you will get the fundamental time period ok. So, now seeing this curve we conclude that system oscillates about the static solution at its natural time period ok. So, that x t is the static solution and it is nothing but f t by k where f t is given as p naught by t r into t ok and this is the time axis. So, you have uh, some idea about the variation of the displacement when the forcing time is have a rising pattern with the linear variation of time ok. Now, let us consider this function because our basic objective was that I have listed three types of transient excitation where I mentioned the step force with finite rise time. But before going to the uh, step force with finite rise time, I first discuss the part which is a ram part that is linearly varying part and I uh, derive the expression. So, I will directly use this expression in deriving the expression for this type of excitation. So, this excitation has a finite rise time T r and then it remains constant for certain duration ok. Now, you can see the this part has the response that we have obtained is same as the ram function, but here we are getting the constant force phase and in constant force phase we know that uh, system subjected to constant force phase the response is governed by this uh, expression simple expression say x t x s t which is the static displacement maximum into 1 minus cos omega n t. So, that we will utilize here, but one thing has to be remembered that while using this step force uh, after 
this uh, ram function we have to use the initial condition that is produced by the ramp excitation at time t is equal to tr now two phases are there so let us see and variation of force you can see p not t by tr for t less than or equal to tr and then p not when uh, this this t is greater than equal to tr okay so you have got this uh, forcing function so there are two phases one is ram phase one is constant force phase okay and after superimposing this because this is a linear system we will get the total response okay now we have already found that during ram phase the unram single degree freedom system behaves like that xt equal to xt not that is the maximum static displacement that is nothing but p not by k into t by tr minus sin omega n t divided by omega n tr so that expression is valid for t greater than less than tr so that is the region in which this expression can be applied for force vibration phase now response during constant phase is found using existing solution for free vibration and step force okay so we have uh, actually this two phases one is ram phase and then constant phase okay constant force phase and this is p not okay this is the rise time tr and t now response during constant phase is uh, given as a constant phase if I see this response as a simple expression say xt x st 0 1 minus cos omega n t but this is the force vibration part only force vibration part however you can see the ram force ceases here so when the constant phase starts then it starts from a initial condition that is produced by the ram force so you have to use the homogeneous solution plus force vibration part that is particular integral to find the complete solution after t is equal to tr so instead of uh, t we have to put here t minus tr okay now at the end of this time that is the t is equal to tr we have from the this expression we have uh, this x tr equal to x st 1 minus sin omega n tr divided by omega n tr and uh, here you can see that with uh, this uh, tr is uh, taken here uh, to normalize this function okay then x dot tr is equal to x t naught divided by tr 1 minus cos omega n tr that is coming from the differentiation of these quantities because we require this uh, uh, velocity okay velocity and displacement so here displacement at the end of uh, tr here you write this at the end of tr here tr by tr that is 1 tr so this becomes 1 ok so therefore 1 factor is there so ultimately this expression is x by tr equal to x st 0 1 how 1 is coming because here we put tr so tr by tr is 1 so 1 minus sin omega n tr divided by omega n tr ok then if i want to find the velocity from this expression there is original expression was this and after differentiation we can see that the velocity at the end of rise time that is at t is equal to tr is given by x dot that is the time differentiation of x equal to x st 
divided by Tr, Tr I have taken common into 1 minus cos omega n Tr. So, that is the initial condition for displacement and velocity which need to be utilized when the step input starts. So, let us see how we can utilize this. During constant force phase, we know that it is subjected to free vibration, a free vibration part is there and also force vibration part. So, this quantity that I have written up to this is the free vibration part and initial condition is due to the displacement and velocity produced by the ram function at t is equal to tr. So, x tr is the displacement of the system due to ram function at t is equal to tr and this is the time and uh, cos function and cos omega n t and instead of t we have written here t minus tr because it is after time tr plus x dot tr divided by omega n sin omega n t minus tr. So, that is the standard expression for this uh, displace, uh, this displacement of a undamped system subjected to free vibration with initial condition of displacement and velocity. Okay. So, this is free vibration part. that is due to homogeneous solution and this is the force vibration part. Force vibration part. So, superimposing this we get the total response. Okay. Now, substituting x t r and x dot t r and simplifying x t r and x dot t r we have already obtained and let us utilize this here and x dot tr here that we have found in the earlier uh, slides that uh, let me show again this. This is the x, x tr, this is the displacement at the end t is at time t is equal to tr and x dot tr is the velocity at time t is equal to tr. So, utilizing two expressions here in this free vibration part of this uh, step force part uh, step function part then we get this expression. So, x t is equal to x s t maximum bracket 1 plus 1 divided by omega n t r second bracket into 1 minus cos omega n t r bracket first bracket closed then sin omega n t minus t r minus sin omega n t r cos omega n t minus t r. Okay. Now, after simplifying using trigonometrical identities we ultimately get x t equal to x s t not that is the maximum displacement static displacement into 1 minus 1 divided by omega n t r into sin omega n t minus sin omega n t minus t r and this bracket is closed. So, this is the response or uh, total response uh, in the constant force phase. Okay. So, now uh, this can be further simplified and uh, the maximum displacement occurs at time say t is equal to t p. So, how to get the maximum? If I use the principle of uh, calculus, differential calculus, then I differentiate these quantities with respect to t and then equate to 0, we get this uh, cos omega n t p minus cos omega n into t p minus t r equal to 0. So, this expression is resulted after differentiating this expression with respect to time t. Okay. Now, after expanding this we can write cos omega n t p minus cos omega n t p cos omega n t r minus 
sin omega n tp into sin omega n tr. Divide both sides by cos omega n tp. So, we get 1 minus cos omega n tr and then we get minus 10 omega n tp sin omega n tr equal to 0. Our intention is to find the time tp where the maximum response occurs. So, this uh, tp can be found out from this expression. Let us see. So, 10 omega n tp that is written as 1 minus cos omega n tr divided by sin omega n tr. So, in that case we can easily conclude that sin omega n tp will be minus root over 1 by 2 into 1 minus cos omega n tr and cos omega n tp will be minus sin omega n tr divided by root over 2 1 minus cos omega n tr. So, from that expression we can get this time tp. Now, we will utilize this two expression. Our result for t greater than tr displacement was expressed as this is the maximum static displacement multiplied by 1 minus 1 minus 1 by omega n tr into sin omega n t minus sin omega n t minus tr bracket closed and now we have to substitute here this instead of t we have to substitute tp. So, to get the maximum response to get maximum response substitute t is equal to tp where the maximum response occurs and tp is related to this uh, expression by this function sin omega and tp equal to minus root over 1 by 2 into 1 minus cos omega and tr and cos omega and tp equal to minus sin omega and tr divided by root over 2 into 1 minus cos omega n tr ok. So, substitute t is equal to tp here and uh, we write this expression in this fashion for the normalized displacement. So, x now substituting t is equal to tp we get the maximum displacement and therefore, maximum displacement occurs at time t is equal to tp and this is the normalized maximum displacement. So, this is the static displacement x t x s t not maximum static displacement which is nothing but p naught by k where p naught is the maximum magnitude of the force. So, here we can write after this uh, rearranging or you can expand this and we can write sin omega and tp cos omega and tr minus cos omega and tp sin omega and tr minus sin omega and tp. Use sin omega and tp and cos omega and tp. How can we use this? Because we have already obtained the tan omega and tp and therefore, from that we extract sin and cosine. So, utilize this here utilize this here sin omega n t omega n t p and cos omega n t p here you will use also use here. Then we can get this expression. So, 1 plus 1 by omega n t r into minus root over 1 minus cos omega n t r divided by 2 into cos omega n t r plus sin omega n t r divided by root over 2 into 1 minus cos omega n t r into sin omega n t minus you will get uh, this uh, sin omega n t is um, minus. So, you will get here the plus quantity. So, plus uh, 1 minus cos omega n t r divided by 2 ok. So, after further simplifying now you get here you will get here this uh, 
1 plus 1 by omega n t r into minus root over 1 minus cos omega n t r divided by 2 cos omega n t r plus sin omega n t r divided by root over 2 into 1 minus cos omega n t r into sin omega n t omega n t r plus root over 1 minus cos omega n t r divided by 2. So, now uh, taking some term common. So, we are taking this term as a common factor root over 2 1 minus cos omega n t r. So, this term is taken uh, as a common factor uh, numerator omega n t r. So, other terms inside the bracket you can see half minus cos omega n t r divided by 2 plus sin square omega n t r divided by 2 into 1 minus cos omega n t r. So, now you can see if this uh, expression inside the second bracket is simplified we get this and this factor when we um, expand and then divide it by this we uh, get this factor as a 1. So, therefore, we get this maximum normalized displacement is equal to 1 plus root over 2 1 minus cos omega n t r divided by omega n t r. Now, use a familiar uh, trigonometrical identity 1 minus cos omega n t r equal to 2 sin square omega n t r divided by 2 and let omega n is equal to 2 pi by t n. Then we can express the displacement non dimensional displacement maximum displacement as a function of t r by t n as x max by x s t maximum equal to 1 plus absolute sin pi t r divided by t n divided by pi t r divided by t n. So, this is the magnitude of the maximum displacement as a function of t r by t n. Okay. Now, let us see some plots of this uh, displacement of the function x t. So, displacement we have derived uh, basic uh, expression that we have derived in the uh, constant uh, force phase is x t equal to x t naught into 1 minus 1 by omega n t r into sin omega n t minus sin omega n t minus t r. Then we can see if t r value is small compared to this uh, t n, then we get a response like that. So, in that case, the response is similar to that due to sudden step force. So, if you have this is say for example, the static solution here. Uh, so, if T r that is rise time is small, here you can see rise time is only up to this, this is the rise time. So, in that case the response resembles that of a uh, step force that of due to step force. So, therefore, the maximum amplitude uh, for this undamped system we are getting 2 if T r approximately 2 if T r is uh, very small. If it is close to 0 very short duration we will get exactly 2. Then uh, if T r by T n is equal to 1 we will get the response like that. So, two half waves are formed in this linear part and then it remains constant. Okay. Now, for large TR, when the TR is large, you can see here the force is gradually increasing up to the time TR, then response is oscillatory, but it vibrates about the mean deflection that is the static deflection. So, in that case the dynamic effect is uh, appearing to be small. So, larger value of T r T n has the significance that dynamic displacement uh, oscillates close to the static solution 
which means that dynamic effects are small. So, okay. Now, we have different types of shocks that are common in structure. Shocks are actually transient excitations. So, it may be a say I have mentioned three types of uh, shocks here. One is uh, step force with finite rise time. Then uh, I have mentioned that uh, a rectangular pulse, rectangular pulse for a duration TD. Then I have mentioned a half sine wave of the duration TD. There may be other types of pulse also, say triangular pulse or any other form. So, they act for a short duration but produce uh, significant response. Now, because of the common occurrence of shock inputs, there are various uh, real uh, situation where the shock inputs are there, the impact of a heavy object, then earthquake also is a transient type of uh, force, any other force that comes for a short duration and then ceases. So, that type of uh, force can be taken into design consideration because their effects sometimes become significant compared to the, the steady state portions due to exciting force which has a uh, certain frequency. A special characterization of this type of uh, force and its response can be done with the help of this response spectrum. So, what is response spectrum? Response spectrum is nothing but it is a plot of the maximum absolute value of the system's response versus natural frequency of the system. So, this is the definition of the response spectrum. However, the response spectrum can be also constructed not only for the displacement, but it can be cons constructed for the velocity as well as for the acceleration also. For example, we have this uh, uh, a single degree freedom system. subjected to a sinusoidal force say f naught sin omega t where omega n is the natural frequency k by m and omega is the driving frequency. We have seen this response as a variation of driving frequency and here the response magnitude say x bar a x absolute value of x. We have seen for the undamped cases, like that, because here we recognize this as a resonance point, uh, this uh, omega by omega n, this is the one factor. So, we can plot it by this uh, ratio, say omega by omega n, as in the x axis. For damped cases, we have seen that. peak is slightly shifting from 1 and that value we have already mentioned that uh, it is this peak occurs here slightly away from the 1 and its value is given by omega n 1 minus 2 j square where j is the damping ratio. This is the damped case with j. Okay. So, the graph that I have shown here, this also represents a response spectrum for the displacement of a single degree freedom system when subjected to uh, this sinusoidal input or this uh, harmonic input. Okay. Now, we wish to determine the response spectrum for the, uh, the step force with finite rise time. So, we have the excitation in this form. Okay. And non dimensional displacement we have seen that it is equal to Rd and Rd we have found is 1 plus absolute value sin pi Tr by Tn divided by pi Tr by Tn. So, this value we want to find out and this is the response spectrum for this step input Rd. Okay. 
So, response spectrum for the step input with finite rise time, step input with finite rise time that you are seeing and this is the expression for the response spectrum. Now, if I construct a graph for this response spectrum, we can see that the graph varies like that, plot is like that. So, several observation can be made if uh, this TR that rise time is less than Tn by 4, you can see Tn by 4 is here, Tn by 4 it is close to 2. Okay. So, that means this represents a system subjected to a step force. So, step force dominates in that case and if the rise time is Tn by 4 where Tn is the natural time period that is the fundamental time period of the system. Now, if Tr by Tn is large, okay, then you will find that uh, or if you consider that Tr by Tn is integer, you consider it is an integer say 1, 2, 3 etc. You can see the response spectrum curve is touching the line at Rd equal to 1. So, in this when it is integer you are getting the response spectrum ordinate as 1 whereas all the uh, points 2, 3, 4 etc. Tr by Tn ratio is integer you will get the response spectrum value the ordinate of the response spectrum plot is 1. Okay. Now, let us discuss another type of pulse which is rectangular pulse. So, that type of pulse uh, is subjected to a constant force but up to time Td. So, important point here you can note that uh, up to this point Td the system is subjected to force vibration and when the pulse ceases at time Td the system is subjected to free vibration with the initial condition at x td and x dot td. So, we know that for a constant force acting on a single degree undamped system, see freedom undamped system, we get this normalized displacement as xt equal to xt by xst equal to 1 minus cos omega and t and writing t in terms of this uh, omega n in terms of time period we get 1 minus cos 2 pi t by t n. So, in free vibration phase we can now write another expression say x t equal to x t d cos omega n t minus t d plus x dot t d divided by omega n sin omega n t minus t d. So, this expression is valid in free vibration case for an undamped system, single degree freedom system and time here reckons from Td. So, T minus Td we have to substitute here in this argument. Okay. Now, after simplifying this normalized displacement, we get Xt divided by maximum static displacement Xt naught equal to cos omega n t minus t d cos omega n t minus t d minus cos omega n t. So, expressing omega n is equal to 2 pi by t n. Omega n we can use this thing and then use trigonometrical identity. This cos a minus cos b can be expressed in product of two sign terms. So, therefore, we can write this normalized displacement equal to 2 sin pi t d divided by t n into sin 2 pi into t by t n minus half t d by t n and this expression is valid for t greater than t d. Okay. So, you can recognize that there are two phases one is force vibration phase and another is free vibration phase. Now, the larger of the maximum response whether it occurs in free vibration or force vibration we should take it as a overall response and take it to plot the response spectrum curve. The number of local maximum or peak that develop in the force vibration phase depends on this factor. 
because there is no concept of frequency here because it is a rectangular pulse. So, this factor is very important factor Td by Tn ratio instead of say uh, this frequency ratio driving frequency ratio now Td by Tn that is the uh, duration time divided by natural time period is a influencing factor in this response spectrum. Now several conclusion can be drawn if Td is shorter than Tn by 2 no peak will develop during force vibration phase and the response simply builds up from 0 to Td and thereafter at the end of pulse. So you can see the response graph seems like that okay for a rectangular uh, pulse this is the response time response here I am plotting in a, as a non-dimensional form. This is valid for Td by Tn when uh, Td by Tn is small quantity okay. Now when Td by Tn is 1 we get one full wave in this duration of Td then it remains 0. When Td by Tn is equal to 2 we get two waves and then it is the response is uh, 0. So, you can see here uh, this type of curve will be can be obtained for three special ratios that I have taken one is Td by Tn very small quantity very small quantity in that case you will not observe any oscillation oscillation cannot be observed cannot be observed but when Td is equal to Tn you will observe oscillation and Td by Tn you will observe oscillation but here of course the oscillation is not observed and as you go on increasing this uh, Td by Tn ratio you will observe the oscillatory pattern. However, the maximum response you can see is uh, the non-dimensional quantity is 2 and uh, it is the value that is it is superimposed that is uh, force vibration plus free vibration. However, the larger of these two can be taken to construct the response spectrum. So, maximum response during force vibration phase now can be written in the equation form as 1 minus cos 2 pi Td by Tn for Td by Tn less than equal to half and when Td by Tn is greater than half or equal to half it is 2. So, in free vibration case however, the system oscillates in simple harmonic motion with its own frequency and there will be no decay because uh, the system has no damping uh, in our uh, derivation. So, therefore, maximum displacement that we get is equal to x max equal to root over x dot td by omega n whole square plus x td whole square. How this is coming? Because we have the expression that uh, x t equal to we have the expression x t equal to x t d cos omega n t minus uh, t d. Then we have this another term for initial velocity x dot t d divided by omega n sin omega n t minus t d. So, amplitude of this expression is now root over x dot t d by omega n whole square plus x t d whole square ok. So, substituting this x dot t d and x t d that we have found at the end of time uh, t is equal to t d we now get this expression for the uh, response spectrum for such curve. So, R d equal to 2 into uh, absolute value sin pi T d by T n. Now, you can see 
uh, there are two parts one is uh, free vibration and force vibration part and response spectrum can be drawn for the overall maximum so in the force vibration part for example we have this response and free response is this so for any ratio td by tn we take the superimposition of 2 and then we draw the response spectrum curve so for rectangular uh, pulse the response spectrum curve becomes like that with a maximum amplitude with 2 so that is the response spectrum curve for rectangular pulse okay now let us uh, illustrate this uh, concept of response spectrum to find out the maximum displacement of a continuous system a simply supported beam of length l mass m and flexural stiffness ei all are constant quantity along the length of the beam is subjected to step force with finite rise time so forcing function here is like that so here the forcing function is p and tr is given as one second okay and this is the t this is the forcing function okay now we have to find out the maximum displacement at mid span of the simply supported beam the structure is simply supported beam and let us assume that force is acting here at the mid span what is the nature of force nature of force is this step force with finite rise time so we will make use of the response spectrum so in the kth mode the discretized equation that is equation of motion in generalized coordinate several times we have used this for unramped system is eta double dot k k is the mode number plus omega k square that is the kth frequency square natural frequency square into eta k t equal to this capital gamma uh, in the kth mode this symbol into f t now this is nothing but model participation factor so gamma k is equal to uh, this integral 0 to l m phi k x dx divided by integration 0 to l m phi k square x dx that means uh, the mode shape function square and here it is mode shape function integrated with respect to x and in both the numerator and denominator m is associated this is because of automatic condition that we have used for discretization of the equation of motion of the beam vibration that was partial differential equation and after discretization using the orthogonality condition and superimposition of modes it now becomes uh, this eta double dot k plus omega k omega square k into eta k equal to gamma k f t now it is nothing but a single degree equation that we can compare it with mx dot plus kx equal to this ft that we have earlier taken to derive the equation for the response spectrum curve only here the actual response of the simple uh, single span beam will be built up by superimposition of mode so if n number of modes are taken here theoretically there are infinite number of modes possible but if i take n number of modes then i can take so now we have to find the solution for eta t and knowing the mode shape function for the simply supported beam we can find the response that is built up at any location x now we are interested to find the response at the mid span so let us investigate this how we can calculate using the response spectrum expression okay so first calculate the model participation factor for constant mass m 
we have this uh, numerator in the first mode we have this integral uh, sin pi x by l dx integrated in the limit 0 to l divided by this integration 0 to l sin square pi x by l dx. You can see due to orthogonality condition of the sine function this integral is uh, that is for orthogonality condition of the sine function we know sine square n pi x by l dx is l by 2. So making use of this and integrating this expression numerator, numerator we ultimately get t1 uh, gamma 1 equal to 4 by pi equal to 1.2732. Now gamma 2 if we see in the second mode we have to integrate this 0 to L then this is the second mode shape of the simply supported uh, beam into dx divided by integration of 0 to L sin square 2 pi x by L dx utilizing this integral and again integrating this it becomes 0. Then the gamma 3 that is third modal participation factor again integrating this uh, with the third mode function that is sin 3 pi x by L integrated with respect to x in the limit 0 to L and uh, divided by the integration is sin square 3 pi x by L dx limit is 0 to L. Again we make use of this same uh, orthogonality condition uh, this integral and we get gamma 3 equal to 4 by 3 pi which is equal to 0 0.4244 and we can note subsequently that for even values even modes when k is equal to 2, 4, 6 etc this model participation factor is 0 for this simply supported beam and uh, similarly we get because uh, in the question it is given we have to consider up to fifth mode so we are calculating up to fifth mode the model participation factor it is gamma 5 is equal to 4 by 5 pi equal to 0.2546. So all the model participation factors are calculated. Now we perform the calculation after knowing certain important parameters. So omega n is the natural frequency in the nth mode of the simply supported beam and it is given by n pi whole square root over e i by m l to the power 4. Then time period in any mode is given by 2 pi by omega n. The static displacement is now p by omega square k in the kth mode. Similarly, this the displacement at the mid span location, maximum displacement in the mid span location now we are writing y l by 2 equal to gamma model participation factor in the kth mode into r d k that is the response spectrum drawn for the kth mode into x s t 0 k that is the maximum static displacement in the kth mode but you have to sum it k is equal to 1 to n whatever number of modes you have taken then you will get the total response. Now rd equal to x max divided by x t naught equal to 1 plus sin pi t r by t n divided by pi t r by t n. So this is the expression for rd. Let us show the calculation in a tabular form. Uh, so uh, I made a table. Uh, where the mode number are given in the first column and then natural frequency in different modes are tabulated. Uh, you can see the fundamental natural frequency is 62.42 radian per second and thereafter it increases and at the fifth mode the natural frequency is 1560.5 radian per second. Then this ratio that is T r by T n where T r is the rise time, T n is the natural frequency corresponding to nth mode, I mean the natural time period corresponding to nth mode 
are tabulated in the third column. Uh, this is the ratio actually T r by T n and then we found the this uh, model participation factor in different modes. So, according to the expression that we have shown in the earlier slide, we have calculated the model participation factor here. First mode it is 1.2732, then second mode it is 0. In fact, for every even modes, the model participation factors are 0. So, we have written the model participation factor corresponding to only odd number of modes. You can see here it is for uh, first mode it is written here and third mode also and fifth mode. Then we have determined the ordinates of the response spectrum corresponding to kth mode and it is found as 1.0065 at the first mode. At the third mode it is 1.0034 and at the fifth mode it is 1.0011. You can see the decrease of uh, model participation as the number of mode increases. Then we have found the static displacement, it is uh, at different modes 0 0.256, uh, first modes, uh, third mode it is 0 0.003 and the fifth mode it is 0 0.0004. Okay. Displacement at mid span is calculated as the expression given earlier and we can see that corresponding to first mode the displacement is 0 0.328 and you can see that as the number of mode increases the displacement is decreasing. So, you can see here at the third mode it is 0 0.0013 at the fifth mode it is 0 0.0002. So, after summing up according to model superposition technique, we get the total displacement at the mid span is 0 0.32 meter. Now, similarly the response spectrum for velocity as well as acceleration can be constructed and you can take it, it as an exercise because you have the expression for the displacement. From that you can derive the expression for velocity by differentiating with respect to time and then again differentiate velocity you will get the acceleration. So, then you can plot this non-dimensional velocity and non-dimensional displacement as a function of T r by T n. So, you will get the response spectrum curve. Okay. So, here we get the response spectrum curve for the displacement function only. But similarly, the other this is the response spectrum curve for displacement R d we have written R d d represents displacement. But for other quantities say velocity and acceleration response spectrum can also be constructed. So, let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture we discussed about the shock spectrum that is also known as response spectrum and method of obtaining this how to obtain the response spectrum that I illustrated with detailed derivation and uh, how to take into account of this, uh, this uh, forcing function. Sometimes it is a combination of free vibration and force vibration part you have to see the overall maximum and then plot the maximum. Uh, displacement. So, response spectrum is nothing but plot of maximum displacement against this uh, time period, natural time period of the single degree freedom system. Okay. Here of course, we have neglected damping, but if we include damping we can also construct. Two types of excitation we have illustrated today. One is step input with finite rise time and another is rectangular pulse for a short duration. This uh, plot that is we obtain is known as response spectrum curves and we utilize this response spectrum expression or curve whatever may be because we if we use the expression result will be accurate and if we read the values from the curve there will be some error due to a, a human error that is possible. So, we use the expression instead of curve. 
and lastly we solved a numerical example of distributed parameter system that is simply supported beam and to determine the maximum response at some location here we have specified mid span location but we can uh, say any other location also from the given excitation and known response spectrum expression or curve thank you very much Thank mm -hmm. you.